Hey everyone, welcome to Kramer Corner. Happy Tuesday evening to you all. It is 9.00 something Eastern Standard Time, or a little bit late, had a couple technical difficulties. And forgive me if I'm shouting like Austin Powers coming out of an unfrozen state. I'm using some in-ear monitors and I'm trying to give another fair chance, another fair shake to. Um, they're, uh, I won't say what brand they are. They sound amazing in my ears. They sound great, but they're probably about the most uncomfortable thing on the face of this earth. Um, but before we get into everything, I just want to remind, uh, I don't have to remind, but just to take a moment uh, to recognize um, a day today that's kind of a, you know, a, a sad occasion, uh, September 11th. And uh, yeah, just uh, any, any of you that are watching that had uh, friends and family members and things like that that were lost, um, you know, condolences to your families. It's, uh, you know, I was talking to Junior about it today and, uh, you know, he was, you know, seeing all the things online and uh, things like that as well, too. And I was telling him how I remember it just like it was yesterday. It does it does seem to be just like yesterday for, for many of us. And fortunately for a lot of our younger family members, they wouldn't have experienced it. So they don't really necessarily know. But, um, yeah, I'm sure you can all in the chat remember, you know, where you were that day and things like that. So it's, uh, you know, it's a it's a it's a day that we'll always remember for sure. And kind of makes us a little bit uh, stronger in a lot of ways. But, you know, I'm not going to go down that path for a long time, but just, you know, sharing that for a brief moment. Uh, yeah, and the squeaking we are hearing, <laughs> I'm going to change a couple of things. The squeaking you're hearing is this darn bar stool. Uh, so, uh, but I'm going to pull out this in-ear monitor because I hate it. Just one second. Let's get rid of these all together. So the squeaking, I'm not going to be able to get rid of, and I don't need headphones here for a moment because I'm not going to be playing yet. But anyways, got a bunch of people jumping in the chat, which I appreciate. Thank you very much, everybody. Flying solo tonight on uh, on uh, Kramer Corner. And let me see here. Okay. Yeah, okay. No problem. Uh, so over in the chat, we have got a couple different screens set up tonight because I'm using a few different things here, so bear with me. And I apologize if you're hearing squeaking here. It's just bar stool. Uh, Nocturnal Butterfly is here in the uh, chat. Carl Santon is here saying hello. Sean Close, is this live? Yes, it is. I think so. I hope we're live. <laughs> I truly hope we're live. Um, okay, sweet. Love that shirt. Thank you. We'll provide some links uh, later on in the uh, throughout the evening in the uh, in the uh, live chat. Nocturnal Butterfly will do that. The Law is here. Jamie Trevino is up here saying, what's up, Eric? Nice to see you, Jamie. Uh, Carl Santa says, nice tea, Eric. Yeah, it came in the mail today. I'm one of the last people to get a Kramer Corner shirt. <laughs> I host the show, but it's here. I, I enjoy it quite, quite much. Uh, I, I do like the color. The, the green's nice. Uh, Carlos Murad is here saying, hello, everyone. Ricky Mies is here. Hey, Eric. Thanks for the remembrance. No problem. No problem. It's uh, for sure. Uh, Sean Close, I keep saying I'm going to purchase uh, while well, tonight is the night. Birthday gift to me. Fantastic. All right. Well, Nocturnal Butterfly will uh, share the link here in a little bit. We're going to have a look at the, the merch store later on tonight. We're also going to be having a look at, I'll kind of give you a brief overview of what we're going to be doing tonight. It's going to be a short show, maybe up to 60 minutes. Uh, we're going to be having a look at the um, new kind of slash soft launch of the Epiphone slash Kramer Steinberger, all the uh, e-store where you can purchase uh, these guitars, Kramer guitars, obviously, of course. If you don't have a dealer in your nearby area, they always recommend going to your local dealer that's authorized resellers. But if you don't have one in your area, we're going to show you how you can order pretty much from anywhere in the world. We're going to be talking about guests on all the different shows. Um, we're going to be pulling out a couple of the guitars. You can see a couple of the headstocks behind me. I'm going to be pulling out the uh, Kramer Vintage Pacer Deluxe and the Assault 220. Uh, each tuned a little differently, do a little bit of jamming using Line 6 Helix for my sound. I'll have some fun with that. Um, we are uh, just talking about some modifications I've made to the Kramer and uh, talking about some new shows. And then we're just going to spend some time with you guys and girls in the chat. So if that sounds pretty cool to you, you can throw a thumbs up and uh, show your support that way. So let's have a quick peek over back to the chat there too. Um, um, I wonder why. Carl said audio sounds very different tonight. I wonder what's up. Okay, so that, yeah, that's, I wonder what is up with that. That's very strange. I'm not quite sure. What does it sound like? If you can give me um, a bit of uh, an idea how it sounds different. Can you, can you kind of tell me what's wrong, Carlo, or what it sounds different? Because I haven't changed anything that I know of, and um, I'm concerned that we could have a problem. But let me know if what sounds different. Uh, I'm not sure what that may be. It says, uh, she says, uh, Nocturnal says, we're different. I can just hear background noise when you move the chair and stuff. Yeah, I can know that for sure. But I'm one, quite concerned why we're getting some different sounds in the actual uh, broadcast. So let me know there. It sounds echoey or hollow. That's not good. Okay, hang on a second. Let's have a quick look and see if I can fix that. All right. Oh, I know exactly why. 
I know exactly why. You were probably hearing my webcam, and that is horrible. Now you should be hearing this. You should be hearing this. Let me know if it sounds much better now. Let's start throwing some really cool, crazy emoticons in the live chat and let me know. Yeah, Ricky Mesa sounds like you're in the bathroom. I have to go to the bathroom, by the way. Um, but I, I'll save that for after the show. You, so show me all kinds of, yeah, yeah, there, there we go. All right, all right. Throw, throw me those emoticons. <laughs> I was using the webcam mic, which never happens. Sounds like you're talking in a can. There we go. Back to normal. All right. Road for the win. Uh, Logitech C920 nut. All right, there we go. That's right. We got it. We got it. We got it. That never happens. That never happens on the show. However, I do have a few things extra open here tonight. So, um, you know, we're all uh, room for error, right? So, yeah. So it sounds like I'm in the bathroom. We got it. Danny, Donnie Levette says, uh, sounds like you're talking in a can. Yeah. Pringles can would be neat, right? Uh, let me see here. Sean Close says, you're much better. So I, I apologize for the uh, technical difficulties there. Wouldn't be a show without a, the odd technical difficulty, right? Um, and Chad Boston says, hiya, and thank you for being on my live, live stream uh, earlier today. That was good. Yeah, Chad was jamming some blues with the uh, Stuart Stowaway guitar. That was pretty awesome, Chad. It was really, really cool. And uh, Solo's Revenge is here <laughs> with a smiley face. Les Wadley. Wadley says, sounds great now. And there you go, Pickle Rick from uh, Nocturnal Butterfly. So I'm going to do. I'm gonna try a little bit of jamming for a couple minutes, and then we're going to do things in a little, kind of a little bit reverse order. So I'm using Line 6 Helix tonight for my processing sound. It's pretty much all I ever use. And I'm not going to be changing any presets. I'm not going to be changing any patches. I do have uh, HX Edit open, which I might be able to toggle a couple things because my, my Helix floor unit is kind of off to the side, and it's kind of tied down, in other words. I've got a lot of things running that I just couldn't necessarily move it over to me. So I'm going to control a little bit of those things um, with uh, with HX Edit. I'm just going to click on some things on the screen to be able to change any patches. Um and yeah, yeah, Jamie says, I have two ni uh, 920s and the mic is trash compared to dedicated vocal mic. Oh, for sure. I've got three of them here as well, too, for different camera angles. Matter of fact, I can jump to another one right one second here. I can bring this down here and do this. And there we go. See, camera number two, another another 920. And the, the uh, microphone quality is, is, is horrible. It's not really meant for, uh, you know, broadcast. However, I just happened to toggle it by accident. So we're good. We're all good. So I'm going to, instead of using these... I don't even want to say the brand. I'm going to get rid of these. I'm going to get rid of these things. I really wanted to like these headphones. I really did. Got the, the uh, I won't even say the brand, but people will probably recognize them when they see them. These things. Okay. They're big. They're, they're awkward. They're uncomfortable. They sound good, but that's where, that's where my review stops. They're horrible. Absolutely horrible. They won't stay in my ears. I've tried small. I've tried the small, uh, uh, ear ear pads, whatever you want to call them, the buds. I've tried medium, I've tried large, and they just don't, they won't fit my head, so. Won't fit my ears. So I'm going to grab a guitar here in a second. We're going to turn off the microphone. I'm going to have to use these, the old-fashioned way, to uh, to listen to music. All right, and we're going to jam here in a second. Just going to give you some, uh, some sounds from the Kramers. So one of the things I did here with the uh, the Vintage Pacer Deluxe, the first thing I did, actually wasn't the first thing I did, but one of the first things I did, um, a lot of the guitars come with what's called a treble bleed circuit, and I yanked that out of there as fast as I possibly could. I'm not one for treble bleed. What that does is you can kind of turn down the volume, and it kind of keeps a consistent tone, if you will, uh, at even low volumes. But for high gain rock, I don't like that, so I pulled that out right away. That's about the only modification I've done to the guitar other than... Um, I put the titanium string lock blocks in here, obviously from Futone. And then what's next on deck is I'm going to be getting the full gamut of uh, brass block for the back, the stainless steel. You can't see it here, but I'll be replacing those with the stainless steel lock nuts, stainless steel saddle screws, uh, stainless steel string locks, the whole works. And that will certainly make the guitar sing and also have you know longevity for the guitar as well, too. So I'm going to see if we can actually hear anything here yet. And I do apologize for the squeaky stool. I'm going to have to put some WD-40 on it. Um, and Ricky Mee says, yeah, you have to get the fitted kind. The, the, the only way to do it, Ricky, uh, properly, I mean, really, really properly, is to get your get an ear mold. And um, I know Adam Reaver's uh, better half. She does that. Uh, she's a hearing specialist, he uh, audiologist. I think that's her title, whatever. I'm not 100% sure on that, but she'll do molds of your ears, and then you go to your various companies that you want to get your uh, in-ears from, and they're molded exactly to your head. So let's just see if we hear anything here. One sec. <laughs> Okay, and we have a question already. 
Um, Les widely says, uh, and Les, I, I, I apologize if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. He says, I just bought a used Mean Street 5150 guitar. Do you know the pickup in it? Uh, I do not. I'm going to say probably, I'm going to just guess. Here, just a, it's a wild guess. Uh, a, a JB, uh, or sorry, no, sorry, probably Duncan Custom. Uh, maybe JB, I'm not sure, but Duncan Custom would be what the average guy would put in there. But I don't know. I, it's, it's just a guess. Who knows? But um, if it sounds good, uh, do you like it? That's the main thing. If you like it, that's all that matters. Um, but I'm going to say probably a custom. If I was building one of those, that's probably what I would do. Uh, there we go. Okay, good. So everyone's uh, thinking the sounds okay now as well. So let me see here. Let's get some tunes cranked up. I'm going to play. I've got, see, this was what's really weird for me. I never play a floating tremolo on my guitars. Uh, all my uh, the other brands of guitars, like the EVH Wolfgangs and things like that, the PV Wolfgangs, they're all fl- uh, flush mount trams, and I never have a floating trem. However, this guitar came from the factory uh, floating, and I thought, you know what? Let's keep it that way because it's going to make me play a little differently. And it's going to make me work a little differently, and it does. It does make me work a little differently. Um, and I've already learned how to feather touch my, you know, because I'm a palm muter for sure, on, and I rest right on anchor on the uh, on a tremolo. So I'm learning how to, you know, back that off and feather touch it. So I've got my technique down a little bit better with that. Hey, Eljon Go is here. Hey, nice to see you, my friend. Uh, okay, and Ricky says he thinks it's a JB. It's very well could be. So I've learned to adapt to the floating trim. And also I had a guitar come from Line 6. It's their Variax guitar, the JTV89F. And it has a floating trim as well, too. And I, I like it. So I'm keeping this guitar and the other one with the floating trim because it's nice to be able to do, you know, the warbles and all that kind of cool stuff. Now, I, I can't do the D-Tuna unless I purchase one of Adam's accessories that allows you to uh, have a floating trim and a D-Tuna. You just won't be able to do the warbles. But other than that, everything is still 100% stock. And the preset you're hearing right now is a preset I, I wrote on Helix. It's my it's called Versatile VH. And the reason why I call it Versatile VH, actually, let's go to it for a second. Let's see if I can show you that screen, okay? Uh, Sean Pierce Johnson is here. Thanks, Sean, for joining. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, so let's go to the Helix screen for a second here, and hopefully I still have it working. All right, there we go. All right, so I'm on a, on a patch called Versatile VH, and the reason why I call it that, what you're hearing right now is a, is a very, very wet sound. Okay. Lots, lots of reverb, but with a couple touches of things here, I'm going to just move my other screen for a brief moment, okay? And I'm going to show you what we can do here. So we got, you know, your typical... I'm going to put on headphones. So at least hear myself in stereo. I know you're hearing a little bit of string clack here from the microphone, but watch this. Just by toggling on a uh, stereo pitch detune, okay, this brings it from an old, you know, vintage Van Halen uh, type of tone. Watch this, ready? To a modern. pretty cool that's just like sticking on the pitch to tune and then of course i can toggle over to the uh, other preset which you'll probably recognize the sound One second. thank you carlo i appreciate that Thank you. 
So there you go. That's the eruption patch, which I love this patch to death. Let's go back to rhythm. So what I'm using on it as well, too, let's bring my other screen back so I can see what I'm looking at. I'm using, uh, so I, I, I know people are going to say, can I have this patch? And I'll be more than happy to give it to you, this preset. However, it's not going to sound exactly the same because I can't give you the IRs, the impulse response that comes with it. They were purchased from Celestian. They're the EVH uh, G12, I believe they are. And it's a 412 closed back. So it's mimicking the speakers that are in the EVH 5153 412 cabinet. Um, and I can't give you those because they're commercial. I would not be allowed to give you those. However, my preset will probably work with, you know, the average... You know, you could put a stock cab and Helix on it, um, or you could use any, you know, other commercial uh, impulse responses that you may have or some free ones. So, you know, you could always use those and just tweak it to your liking. But it's cool for Van Halen fans because you can go, do a whole modern kind of gamut of, uh, of Van Halen tones. And I'll show you one other thing while I'm still playing here for a second. We're back on the rhythm patch of that. I will show you just by toggling off a few things. You're going to probably see this uh, this go off there. Okay, so now no, I think we have the detune back on. Okay, let's turn the detune back off. And I think I had this one as an what is this one an octave? Yeah, it's an octave, and I don't have my um, expression pedal handy. So I've got a whole whack of delays. So as this delay right now, we're looking at what uh, 347 milliseconds. So just a nice little echo, right? <laughs> Okay, and I'll turn that one off. And I wish I actually had my Helix over in front of me uh, because I could see what these delays are called. I had some called like, uh, okay, here we go. Here's a ping pong. Let me see. What do we got there? And that's still, I don't even think that's my, that's a ping pong. I know I have an analog delay here somewhere, which I, here we go. We're going to slam the front of the amplifier. So as you can see, I'm slamming the, the amplifier here like Eddie would have done back in the day. I'm not a guy that likes to put uh, de especially delay up front. However, back in the day, we didn't have that luxury of, you know, running through an effects loop. So that's what Eddie did, obviously, right? He would slam the front of the amplifier with these uh, analog delays, tape delays, and all that kind of stuff. So let's put this one on. Here's what we got here. So that would probably be my ain't talking about love, de ain't talking about love delay. <laughs> You can hear the analog, you can almost hear that. Let's see what the other one is. This one is the Bucket Brigade. Kind of, I'm not sure why I put these two side by side. So you can see there's lots, all kinds of different uh, uh, delays here that I'm using. But let's go back to probably the more modern one. There we go. And I have uh, the phaser here. All right, let's jump back over to the chat for a sec. So enough of playing there for a second. I am going to put some of my tracks on in a second to play along with to show you what these things can do. And let's see here. Let's go back here. Jump way back. Let's jump way back. Um, okay, we'll go back here a little bit more. So yeah, we left back off. where We were trying to diagnose where the problem was, and we found out it was my webcam mic. Okay, so let me see. Catch back up. Um, <laughs> and Ricky says, I think the chair sound is gone too. And you know what? Maybe it's just because I'm starting to I'm starting to sweat into the chair, and I'm you know providing natural WD-40. Maybe <laughs> I don't know, but it's gone. I maybe we'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Uh, let me see here. And uh, so yeah, we're talking about the Main Street guitar. Let me see here. Al John's here. Nice to see you, buddy. Uh, let me see here. What did they leave off? Um, so Carlos says I have a Yamaha guitar with a floating trim, and I actually prefer the floating trims, even though I mostly play the EVH Wolfgang now. Very cool. It's it's nice, eh, Carlo? Like it does make you play and think a little differently, and it's it's kind of nice because it's just a different approach to the guitar. Let's let's jump off this Helix screen. We don't need to stay in here for forever. Here, jump off. There we go. There's a little bit better. Um, let me see here. Sean Pierce says. Um, 
uh, Al John, those are uh, Kramer's on killer deals right now. I'm tempted. And you know what? Since we're talking about pricing, let's do that right now. This is a perfect time to jump over. So I have the website open. Let me get a quick sip here because I'm really dry mouth. Now, something I'm going to keep in, in, in mention here as well, too, and Aljean will probably echo the statement. This is kind of a work in progress. The, um, so on the Epiphone website on the e-store, um, the Kramer guitars and a lot of the other guitars were on there um, with you know f- full retail pricing. Some of them are on clearouts and things like that, too. There will be some pictures that may be missing, like if you're going to pick a certain guitar and it says there's a different option in color, they're working on that. So it's it's kind of a soft launch, I would say. I don't, I don't want to put words in their mouths, but a kind of a soft launch. Things will be coming later. But let's jump over there for a second. Where do we have it here? All right, there we go. Okay, so... Um, Nocturnal will throw a link in the descri- or in the chat, it, but it, I'll just tell you right now, it's store.epiphone.com. And of course, right now, as I was saying, as I alluded to in the earlier part of the program, um, the best the best resource for you looking for an Epiphone guitar or Kramer guitar, anything under the umbrella, is to visit one of your local authorized resellers. But we don't always have that luxury. We could be in small town Idaho somewhere, and we don't have a, a store. So this, you know, you can go to your other various online retailers as well too that ship all over the world, things like that. But Epiphone is your nice safety net to purchase as well too. So we're on the website right now. You're seeing some closeout deals. The the Kramer Pariah obviously is a crazy deal. Um, and there's a couple other deals here too. Being that we're coming into the holiday season, there's, you know, people looking for, you know, Christmas gifts and things like that if you celebrate Christmas. And especially if, you, you know, you get little kids these days are really wanting to play an instrument. And I, I highly encourage that. It's, it keeps them out of some, some out of trouble, <laughs> at least a little bit. Maybe get them off of Fortnite for a little bit. These are some great guitars that won't break the bank. You got buy one of these guitars and pick up a small little practice amp and a cord and some cables or, I mean, some, you know, strings and stuff like that. And you're still, you know, not not spending a fortune. So I want to jump over strictly right now, just because we're kind of focused on Kramer. Although there are a couple nice Epiphones I might show you tonight that I would just love to have tucked under my Christmas tree. Uh, I'll show you here. Let's jump over to, so you can pick out all guitar, stuff like that as well too. We're going to pick Kramer. You probably can't see my mouse cursor at the moment. And I will come back over here in a second too, to the uh, um, uh, one second here. Just going to say, type in here. Okay. One sec. Okay, so over here you're seeing the Kramer guitars. Now here again too, these are just a, this is just a start, and some of the pictures could be uh, in, inaccurate as far as the extra colors and things like that as well too. So you've got the Assault 220s, and I can testify to the Assault 220. I'm going to be playing one tonight here. I've got the hardtail version in the uh, tangerine orange, I think they call it. What do they call it? Um, I'll have, I'll tell you the color in a second. But here we go. We have them on here as well too. So let's let's pick the guitar I'm holding in my hand right now, which is kind of cool. Uh, limited edition uh, pace, vintage Pacer. And look at the prices on these things, to be honest with you, $559 US dollars. That is a darn good price. You're talking uh, real Floyd Rose, okay? You know, not a copy. Uh, uh, Duncan Pickups, JB in the back. I mean, you're talking a phenomenal guitar. It's a rock shredder machine. There's nothing that needs to be done to this guitar out of, out of the gate to to rock with this thing. Stays in tune, fantastic. As you see me tonight, I was playing it pretty hard. I'm going to be playing it even harder here shortly. But that's the guitar that I have. There's various other colors, and like I say too, I won't quote I won't quote people on the colors because they could be, um, you know, changing these as days go by. This is kind of a I would say I would if it was me when I develop websites, I would say um, it's a soft launch. Well, that's what you know. I would launch a website just kind of you know not put out a billboard and say come take a look at the website. Kind of a soft launch. That's what I'm thinking. This is kind of a, a similar fashion, but uh, everything is on here. Look at this. Okay, now this would this wouldn't be a guitar that I would go gig with. But for the price, as a backup guitar for a young lad or you know a young girl for Christmas, 120 bucks U.S. dollars, regular 400, on for 119.97. Where can you buy a guitar uh, for 200 bucks um, anywhere that will that looks cool and stays in tune? Very very nice guitar, very similar with the beak neck headstock you see with me. I guess you can't really see where I'm pointing, um, but the same style headstock that you see on this guitar, similar style, uh, maple neck. I mean everything is just absolutely fantastic. 120 bucks. You save two hundred eighty dollars on that, and uh, whereas can continue down uh, your Kramer Pacer. Look at this at two sixty nine, licensed Floyd Rose on that one, different colors, just uh, regular six fifty. You're saving three hundred eighty one dollars. So I really suggest you spend some time on this website, and if you can visit one of your local resellers as well too. Now since I we're on the site here, I want to go back again to guitar. I'll show you some other good deals. This is a guitar I've had my eye on for the longest time. The uh, limited edition Tommy Thayer. Now, 
I'm not the world's biggest Tommy Thayer fan. I do. I, I love Kiss. Uh, I love Ace Frehley through and through. But <laughs> Tommy Thayer is is now the part, and uh, it's a pretty cool guitar. A uh, regular fourteen fifteen U.S. dollars for five eighty four. <laughs> 584 bucks for an Explorer. Uh, you save $831. That's a, it's a pretty amazing deal. And even look at this here too. This is pretty sweet. I might even gravitate towards that. Am amazing. 550 bucks. But I don't want to I don't want to miss any questions here in the chat. So I want to jump back just for a second, okay, and catch back up and then we'll do a little bit of jamming. All right, so let's go back over here. All right, we're back. Uh, so, uh, definitely some beauties. Nocturnal Butterfly is saying, um, let me see here. Yeah, Jamie says floating or bust. I, I agree with you on that for sure. Uh, Sean Pierce Johnson says, oh no, sorry. Uh, Solo's Revenge is I was practicing pound kick this weekend. That's a fun song to do. Uh, Sean Pierce says only if the spare cash were available. Um, uh, and, uh, Aljean says, haha, you're a floater. Uh, Jason Wade, Aviation Gear TV. So what's the deal with the Kramer Pariah on clearance on Instagram for two ninety nine? It looks pretty sick. Yeah, so you're probably seeing that right now. Just clearing out some, clearing out some stock. Um, I don't know what that means, um, you know, but it's it's a nice clearance sale, and who knows? It might even mean that more things are coming down the road. But uh, I don't think you can go wrong with it for sure at that price. It's it's great. I'm just so I'm just so happy. That, like, there was there's some conversations. I don't even know where it was today. It's one of the threads on Facebook. Does, you see this more often than not. People are saying, "Oh, I didn't know Kramer is still around." And you're like, "Yes, they are." Not only are they around, you can get quite a few models from them as well too. So it's it's nice to just spread that word. You know, they didn't really disappear. They just kind of changed a little bit and uh, you know change hands a tiny tiny bit. And uh, they're they're back with a vengeance. And I really strongly put my my testimony in this that they they want to um, r provide a rock guitar. I mean, they're iconic. They're back in the '80s. You know, they were very heavily artist driven back in the day. And now, even though there's a large uh, list of um, artists, they still focus on the customer as uh, you want to say the artist as well too customers are artists too they play them and uh and that's all that matters you know it's, it's kind of funny too you like you look at these uh reader polls for all these bands and these things like that too where they pick the best band and you get like your favorite bands like here in the chat a lot of times the people that come to this show are van halen fans and you'll have van halen will rank you know uh d down lower in the charts when it comes to their poll and it's like, you know what? You know where it counts? It doesn't matter where it reads in the reader's poll. It counts on the street. And that's where it counts with guitars as well, too. It doesn't matter necessarily who's playing the guitar. It matters that people in the streets are talking about it and playing it. And these, these guitars were guitars that people played and they just died to have. They had to have Kramer back in the day because their heroes are using it now. Uh, you know, there's uh, everybody in the next door neighbor has got a Kramer somewhere in their corner, as we call it here, the Kramer Corner. And that's another thing, too, I'll extend to you, too. If, you, if any of you guys or girls out there have a nice Kramer collection, like Jamie Trevino, he's already been on the show here and he has an incredible collection. But if you'd like to come on one night and show off, kind of do a show and tell with your Kramers, uh, new and... Um, and vintage as well please reach out to us through the facebook page facebook.com slash kramer corner and uh, get us your contact details and we'll arrange a night we can come on and you can show off your guitars and tell us your stories and a lot of times there's some magical stories behind these things so let's continue on um uh Aljean says so the prize is a solid guitar very sg like okay nice to know uh let me see here uh sean close says okay i want to play like eric someday jason wade says and sean close says me too um <laughs> sean says uh, this is a bad show to watch when you have gas and no cash. I know it, it's it, any gear show, right? It's one of those things where like we, we want to watch to hang out with the family of guitar players and, and gear freaks. And then we like, oh no, I want this too. And I'm just as guilty too. I watch some of these shows. I'm like, oh no, you know, <laughs> it's, it, it's kind of a, a double-edged sword, isn't it? Uh, and Sean Pierce says, now I want a Helix. They're fun. They're fun. Modeling is in a place right now where it's it's comfortable. Um, there's you know there's millions of uh, I shouldn't say there's millions. There's there's a good handful to almost a dozen uh, good brands out there right now, and it's a happy place for everybody. It's it's pretty cool. It's come a long way. You know, even some small little modeling pedals are pretty awesome. Uh, so Aljean says, yes, I'm saving up for Helix as well too. Uh, Donnie Levette says, Eric, you sound awesome. Thank you very very much. Um, and Jamie says, yeah, Jamie was sharing these posts this morning as well, too. He says, two of my friends took advantage of that sale today. The striker retails at over $600 in the market. Can be purchased new at $400 and are dis discontinued or discounted to $200 to $280. I'm buying mine tomorrow. It's, that's a deal, man. I mean, really, that's like buying two pickups and, and a pack of guitar strings, you know, really, for the most part. Uh, and that's what you get. 
Uh, Bularf says, well, now I'm going to OCD over Kramer. Wife's going to kick me out one of these days. Nice to see you here, Bularf. I haven't seen you for a little bit. Nice to have you in the chat. Um, and Aljon says, my main rig right now is a Boss Wazacraft. Thanks for the uh, for those demos. And yeah, the Boss Wazacraft, um, the local dealer, Aljon, you know who I'm talking about that's close to me, who's a Gibson dealer. They also sell Boss as well, too. And they've got the Wazacraft and the Katana Artist, whatever it's called. Um, they look pretty cool. They look really awesome. I didn't get a chance to play through those yet, but I, I hear good things. So that's uh, that's awesome. Uh, let me see here. Chad Boston says, sick playing. Thank you. Uh, and uh, Sean Pierce says, uh, nice. I still think about that amp. The new Katanas are ace. They are. We've Junior has the 50 watt here, and we, we've we upgraded the firmware on it. And they brought out some of the, the effects like we like, uh, you know, the Phase 90 and things like that. So it's it's a great little amplifier. The losses reminds me of the Yo days. Yeah. Aljon says, I've got a, a G1 Katana uh, too. I love it. Played a show with it a few weeks ago. Very, very nice. Um, let me see here. No, I scroll too fast. Okay. And let me see here. Um, let me see. Uh, I'm sorry, I scrolled way too fast. Okay, so here, okay, I'm going to go back just a little tiny bit. Um, okay, so we got our, our uh, hang on, let me go back just a little bit for a little bit backwards. So Al John saying, yeah, the Epiphone Kramer store is a work in progress. Uh, let me see here, I scrolled too fast. I'm sorry. Oh, Tone was here, Jared is here. Um, I, I just didn't mean to miss you. He says, sorry to hear those IMs don't fit you. You're one of a very few people that haven't worked for, and the Oscar winner is. <laughs> yeah, they just, they don't, man. I've tried them all. I've, I mean, as you can see, I've got the medium, the the cozy, uh, we have cushy ones, the medium ones on there. I tried small and large. They just won't go in. They do sound good. They sound awesome when I ram them on my ears. I'm just afraid if I push them any further, there's going to be some damage. Uh, and I'd much rather wear those than these big uh, bulky things I'm wearing right now. You see what I'm doing my sh my show. I'm just wearing my, uh, our, um, what do you call them, Apple earbuds, whatever. But uh, yeah, you know, it doesn't work, but I know they've been great for you. So um, I'm happy to hear that they work for you. Um... Let me see here. Kramer assaults are great. I have the 25 and a half scale, thin body and uh, fast neck. That's from Eljean. Uh, FNF Gamers is here. Hi there. I'm feeling great. So I have to ask, how's everyone today? Doing very, very well. Nice to have you back. Uh, let me see here. The Epiphone Kramer store. I mentioned that as well too. We've got the link from Nocturnal as well. Uh, let me see here. Nemtal says, get an Ibanez instead. You know what? Ibanez, there's nothing wrong with Ibanez guitars. I'd love to have one, my original uh, Gem 777 I had. I, in a stupid trade, I traded it off for something very um, inferior, and I missed that guitar to death, and it would be worth, a sm not a small fortune, but it'd be worth it'd be worth some money today. Uh, nothing wrong with Ibanez guitars. I love them too. I mean, th what what is a bad guitar out there, really, these days? I mean, and just because one person says a guitar is a bad guitar, the other person says, I love that guitar. It's like cars, right? Guitars are cool. As long as they stay in tune, they look awesome. They, they give you some feedback as far as, I don't mean sustained feedback. I mean, just a reaction when you play them. It's a good guitar. And, you know, it's there's no, there's no real bad guitar, in my honest opinion. Some things are better than others, right? Uh, let me see here. Uh, and Alshon says, thanks for taking, uh, talking about the clearance user. No problem. We can, we can extend on that as well too. Uh, tangerine orange. Oh man. Yeah. We're going to play that one a bit. That one I've got tuned down to D because I can't do my D tune on this guitar, which I just love to do. And I probably will in the future. So I thought, well, you know what, here's let's, uh, let's utilize two guitars for two tunings. I'm going to bring out the tangerine, uh, two twenty in just a second. Uh, let me see here. So, yeah, this was a very good question. Uh, Peter says, Eric, could you describe the neck on that pacer? It's kind of slim and fast. It, it is a slim, it is a slim neck somewhat. Um, I don't find it's, uh, see, on my Wolfgang Standard, uh, EVH Wolfgang, a different brand, obviously, but the EVH Care Wolfgang Standard, I find it like, um, I kind of said this about the Kramers back in the day as well, too. I know I'm going off on a tangent. I kind of call them like, um, like a broomstick. And I don't mean it necessarily that skinny, but I loved it because I could strangle the neck. You know, and I do like a fat profile as well, too. You know, when I'm, when I'm putting my thumb back behind the neck and I want to do more, you know, type of legato stuff, even though I'm not a great legato player, but I want to get my thumb back and do a legato. I like a wider neck, but this one, you can strangle the neck. So it is a little slim, um, you know, strangling over with your thumb, playing some chords with your thumb. Very, very comfortable. It's a bit of a rolled edge and a slight finish to it as well, too. Not a, not a huge finish, um, but not an unfinished neck either. So it's not gummy. Very, very fast. It's comfortable. It's, uh, you know, rock rock maple just feels beautiful in the hands, solid, beautiful frets. It's a very fast neck. So I hope that answers your question, but it's very comfortable. That's the main thing. It's comfortable, and I like that a lot. Uh, so hopefully, Peter, that helps a little bit. I'd be more than glad to have a conversation with you more, too, if you want to contact me through the Facebook group, if you're on Facebook, um, you know, if we can talk a little bit further on it. 
Uh, let me see here. Scroll down a little bit more. Uh, so sounds like Mike's up to some mischief in the chat. Let me see here. Jason Wade says, oh my God, look at the Kramer SM1 EMG block for 689. I know, incredible prices. And I'm really hoping I don't miss anybody here either. Uh, Eljon says, the LTD Pacer vintage colors and pricing are great. Mississippi Treasure Hunter is here. Nice to see you, my friend. Let me see here. All right, so yeah, Sean Pierce says that Tommy Thayer price is insane. I'd love to get that guitar. I really would. Uh, Craig, our guitar wannabe is here. Craig, great demo on Facebook earlier tonight, man. You want to talk about a great guitar player. He says, hey, no, just jumped in to say hi. No problem. He may be gone already too, but you know, I appreciate the fact that you jumped in. And uh, we're going to try to get him on the show here in the distant near future as well. He's doing some great things with um, guitar restorations and uh, custom, all kinds of co- really cool stuff. He's like a luthier and a repair guy, kind of a jack of all trades and just happens to be an amazing guitar player. Uh, so that's very, very cool. Hopefully to have him back on as well too. Uh, Dan Wilhite is here saying uh, what's up and Terry I don't even know if I said hi to you Um, (laughs) but thank you Terry Terry's one of our mods and a great mod does a great job like everybody else here uh, in the chat helping us moderate uh, let me see here. FNF Gamer says, if you're new to the stream, make sure you subscribe to EVH and Gear TV. Thank you. I appreciate that. And also, I like the stream to continue to support Eric. I appreciate that. It means a lot. I often forget to say that myself. Um, <laughs> Jamie says, I'm benching myself for a few episodes unless you want to do a Kramer fan roundtable at some point. And I think I might do that. That's a good idea as well, too. Just like we do it over on the Helix Hour. We've been uh, kind of starting that idea with a monthly roundtable. And I'm uh, I'm up for that. I'm up for that as well. That'd be really cool. A nice show and tell. Because some people might only have two Kramers or one Kramer. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, having one is awesome. Um, but if they got more, we can kind of show them off and t- talk about them. A Mississippi Treasure Hunter says, nice shirt, Eric. Thank you. I, I kind of dig it, too. It's nice. So I'm going to try and highlight here. We're going to highlight right where Mississippi was. And did I see Darren was here as well too? Yes, Darren Moore, Rock and Roll, talking about a Kramer fan. Uh, Darren's uh, recently joined the family of Kramer, uh, thanks to Jamie and and uh, some some of the things I've done here. More so Jamie, because Jamie has way more Kramers than I do, and he's uh, working with Jamie cr- closely. But, uh, you know, it's just nice when another member joins the family of uh, Kramer owners. It's, it's really, really cool. It's a, it's a, it's a brotherhood, and, and I like it. And the cool thing is, too, I find with the Kramer, um, I, this is something I really, I don't think I've ever said this before, but like the Line 6 community, um, th- it's a really friendly community, and everyone's sharing and positive and all that kind of stuff. I'm really finding that with Kramer as well, too. You don't find too often, you know, people are like, oh, you got this and you got that, and they're judging you. And, and, and if you ask a silly question, like, what could I do with my Kramer if I want to change a pickup? They don't attack you. So that's kind of cool. I like that brotherhood and uh, camaraderie. It's very, very cool. So it's nice to have Darren here in the chat and also in the Kramer uh, family. So I'm going to try to highlight where I left off. And he says, I'll come on with my new Kramer 404 and another goodie coming tomorrow. The law, come on with me. Okay, good. So Darren, you're more than welcome to do that. I would love to have you. So I'm going to highlight where he was. So I'm going to call up some tunes here. And you guys have heard me play some of my band songs before. I'm going to play just a couple of those. And um, it, just to avoid any, you know, if I'm doing any kind of, you know, written copyright, written material, at least there's no uh, no problems with it. Although I can do Van Halen, but that's still cool. So I'm going to turn off my vocal mic. I'm going to use this one guitar for the entire song. I'm not going to change any presets on Helix because I don't have the foot and the feet available and the controllers over there. So I've got my volume pretty much set. Uh, for clean, I'm just going to roll back my volume and just kind of play a little dirty. But I'll play one of my songs and we'll see how it sounds uh, with the uh, Kramer Vintage Pacer Deluxe. All right, let's give this a try. I'm 
right, so there we go. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. A couple songs from the old uh, Finding Core album. That was from 5210. So let's jump back over to, uh, so we left off with Jamie, or no, sorry, with Darren, saying he's going to come on with his nuke. Um, and, and Darren or Jamie says, uh, I know another Kramer fan that would be down close to you unless he passes on a better place <laughs> because he's hungry. No problem. Let me know about that for sure. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Shumi Shuminati, you should get Vinny Vincent on now that he has resurfaced. Looking into that, it's great, very good suggestion. Uh, Bobby Clipper says, Hey, Eric, I see a Kramer in my future. You certainly will not be disappointed. Uh, Frank McNeil says, Jamie shared this with me earlier and I cashed in. Um, <laughs> no problem. Uh, let me see here. I can scroll down. Um, Jason Wade. Um, Oh, this is very cool. Jason Wade says, Nocturnal Butterfly and everyone else. Did you know that Kramer Corner has the second best live stream format on YouTube only because EVH Cure TV has the best? Thank you. That is so nice. I want to save that as a testimonial. I love that. Thank you so very, very much. Uh, okay. And and um, yes, actually, uh, I see some notes about the music. We'll try to get that to you uh, folks as well, too. Oh, let me see here. And Jason Wade says, The Tone King says so. Yeah, that was nice. I had a friend send me that video the other day. He was on another stream. And it was very cool that he said that about uh, about EVH and Gear TV. Oh, right on. I think I saw Craig saying he was still here. Um, I, I scrolled too fast. Um, but I think he said he's here. Yeah, he's still here. He says, and he says, thank you. That's awesome. Uh, let me see here. What else? Frank McNeil says... Um, uh, EVH TV, can you look at the desert yellow pacer and help me understand what natural and vintage sunburst mean? No yellow. Yeah. So Frank, I, I will, I will gladly talk to you. You're, you're friends with me on Facebook. Let's chat tomorrow about that. Um, but they're, they're actually, so the question is, um, uh, natural and vintage sunburst. We'll go through that as well too. I'll get, I'll get you some information on that and some of the colors that they're, they're not actually showing there yet. Um, but I will help you on that for sure. Hit me a message on Facebook and I'll be more than glad to go through that with you. And Jason Wade says, wicked, love it. Uh, Terry says, very nice, Eric, I appreciate that. Uh, Mississippi says, uh, YNT. Uh, yeah, you know what? And everyone says that, right? So that, that one riff of mine it goes like this. Now, I don't know YNT. I never, ever tried to write like them, but I think their, their song goes like this, right? Something like that. I don't want to play too much. I don't want them to sue me for something that I actually I wrote as well too. So, um, but yeah, Y and T kind of sound for sure. Um, and Jason Wade says my neighbors hate me right now. I bet. I bet. More dive bombs. Oh, I turned off my toggle. Here's one for you. This is this is a Krager. This is a Krager for you. There we go. Got to have one of those. Bular says nice. Nocturnal says, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so and be sure to smash that bell. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, and Jason, we'll get you. We'll get you uh, I'll talk to you about some music for sure. Uh, talk to me for sure on Facebook. We'll get you hooked up. Um, and uh, nice. Jared says, from Tone Wars, says, first time hearing your original music. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not as heavy as what you do for sure. Um, the first record, This picture this. Not that I'm ever going to ever put myself in the category of Mark Tremonti or things like that. Uh, I couldn't, I couldn't even hold his guitar pick. But you know, it's really you hear Creed before, and you hear Mark Tremonti playing Creed, and you didn't even know the guy could really play guitar. And then he starts doing Alter Bridge and stuff like that. And Tremonti, you're like, where did this guitar player come from? He's like a shred demon. Um, our first record, we did two records with Finding Core. The first one, which I'm going to play some songs from in a minute, was more songwriting material. It was more, and there's a couple little wanky guitar solos, but for the most part, it was all about the songs. And then that singer left, and uh, and we got another singer. And um, during that process, I wrote 90% of the music. So there's more guitar-driven rock in the second album, which you're hearing from there. So so it's yeah, it's a little bit more rocky and more guitar stuff. So I'm glad you like it, uh, uh, Jared. I appreciate that. Um, and Dan Wilhite says, sounded great, Eric. I'm sure you've already shown it, but I missed it. Where is your kill switch? Oh, I don't actually have one. I don't have a kill switch in this one. So I've done like your typical Ace Fraley. Uh, on this guitar, I've got volume, tone, volume, volume, tone, and also have a split coil as well, too, on each one, which is nice. So you can get some very versatile tones. So I just rolled off the uh, neck pickup. So, I could... so that's all I'm doing for that one. You know, that kind of deal, right? Okay, so I'll see if there's any other songs off of this one I'm going to play. Um, I don't think I will. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab the Assault 220. How would you like to see that one? It's a, it's a 24 fret guitar, which is foreign to me. Um, and it's nice because here again, just like a floating tremolo, uh, it makes me play a little differently as well too. And there's no dots on the fretboard. So I'm like, oh my God, I'm lost. I need a roadmap. So let me mute um, the Helix here so I'm not hearing any pops. I don't have any noiseless uh, cables here. So we'll do that. Okay, we're going to grab the Assault 220.
This guitar has to be seen in person to appreciate the color. Online, it looks like a, I'm going to say like a rust or uh, something of that nature, but it's, it's beautiful and, and a real metallic finish as well too. Okay, so we're in drop D. A quite wide profile in this one, but a soft, a very soft C, if that makes sense. I'm not, I'm sure, I don't describe necks that well. I just tell my friends, here, pick it up and play it. But it's a very soft, wide neck, and I like that a lot. But as you see, no fret markers on it other than on the side of the, uh, the fingerboard. So that kind of will direct you. So I, I do sometimes get a little lost on the guitar. So let's bring the Helix back on. And uh, let me see here. But here we go. It's, it's mean. I like it. Okay, I think we get the harmonics. Okay, so let's have some fun with this one. This one, I really like this one. It's a really simple song I wrote called Runaway. And I know Darren likes this one. He used to like this one a lot. Um, I just like the harmonics in it. It does something like this. Yeah, so there. Okay, so let's try that one. This is fun. It's called Runaway. All right on the Kramer Assault 220. Locking tuners on the back, by the way. Can you see those? Locking tuners.
Okay, so I'm going to go back now that we're still on D. I'm going to play an older song from our debut album called Silence, and this is a fun one. Uh, there's nothing really crazy in the guitar at all, nothing crazy at all, but it's a fun song. Let's play this one. And I know Nocturnal Butterfly likes this one as well, too. Uh, let me see here. Where are we? It's called Silence. All right. Let's, here we go. And I'm curious. I've said this a lot. I want to get your opinion. What do you think we were listening to when we wrote this song? What band do you think we were listening to? You can comment. And uh, Nocturnal Butterfly, you can't comment because you know well, who the band we were obsessed with for a little while there at this time. Anyways, here goes. <laughs>
So there you go. I saw a really good one. I saw it. The first answer was uh, the first incorrect answer was New Kids on the Block. And I think that was from Dan. Uh, well, that's a good one. But James St. Mars uh, got it with Tool. Yeah, we were listening to Tool. The bass player was really into that. Uh, so very, very cool. That was right. So that's a song called Silence. Um, let me see here. Uh, Sean Pierce Johnson says, looks like it's time to cook here in California. Lots of fun hanging out. Great tunes by Eric. Uh, by the way, Dirty Boy preamp demo comes out this weekend. I can't wait to see Plea yeah, for sure. I'll share that too on our, our networks as well too. Take care, Sean. Uh, Coffee Drinker is here. Brian Cassell. Greeting friends. That Kramer sounds killer. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate that. Uh, I didn't even see your name. It's nice to have you here. Um, we're going to be wrapping up in probably just a minute. I was hoping to keep this close to an hour, but you know what? The show normally runs 90 minutes anyway, so we're doing pretty good. Uh, let me see here. Jason says, uh, question, why the heck is Eric doing YouTubing? Shouldn't he be on tour somewhere? Man, goodness gracious. Those days are over. Someday I might get back into it, but there, I've seen a lot of the country, a lot of the United States and a lot of Canada. Um, but who knows? I think those days are behind me. YouTube is nice, is a little safer. I get to stay here with the family, walk out there and have a bite to eat and uh, walk in here and say hi and all that kind of stuff. I don't even have to leave the house. I love it. The stories we have. I, we got to get Nocturnal Butterfly on here one of these days. She's shy, but we'll get her on here. We have some incredible band stories, all the most horrific band stories you could possibly think of, breaking down in the middle of winter, uh, tying on a, uh, an exhaust pipe on a 26-foot motorhome with guitar strings and coat hangers. And, uh, oh, man, all, and some glorious stories, too. But 99.9% of the stories are horrific horror stories. And I think you guys and girls will love them. Uh, nice, as James St. Mara says, and Dan Wilhite as well, too. Thank you. I'll play one last song for you here. And then I'm going to go over the last bit of itinerary for the shows. Matter of fact, why don't we do that? I'll tell you the itinerary for the shows here. And then we'll wrap up with... Um, um, what, am I, what was I saying? Yeah, we'll do, go over the itinerary. We'll do that. And then we will wrap up with a song. So uh, we've already talked about the um, the great deals on Kramer. So uh, we'll have the link in the um, chat as Nocturnal has already put that. And I'll put it in the description down below eventually when this video is done airing as well too. She's also told you about our merchandise. You can get the Kramer Corner shirt like I'm wearing right now, plus a lot of other cool stuff. Helix Hour, EVH and Gear TV, and our Broadstash brand. And we've even got some really cool merchandise that's not branded that is all of ours. That's all thanks to Nocturnal Butterfly uh, for the ladies, some really cool ladies' fashions. She's already shared that, I'm sure. So guests, upcoming uh, guests on the show, uh, there's a lot of shows now, uh, and three shows with the fourth one being added. Uh, Thomas Nordig, uh, is a longtime guitar tech for Steve Vai, uh, could be here this Friday. We're just waiting for last-minute uh, confirmation on that. He's doing some uh, work right now, out, uh, out, not with Steve right now, but um, and he's going to be back with Steve, of course, but he's uh, doing some other tech work right now, just making sure his Friday is free, so we sh- could have Thomas Nordig here on Friday. Lots of Steve Vai discussion. Uh, on Sunday on the Helix Hour, we have uh, guitar tech Drew Fopp, uh, who's been in tech with just just about every out there, everybody out there, some of the bigger name bands that you would know for sure, Slipknot and obviously Smashing Pumpkins. Uh, I think he's done some work with Cheryl Crow, um, but a lot of a lot of major uh, major artists, and he's really using Helix to a to a huge extent um, with Smashing Pumpkins, and he's a really cool boutique amp and pedal builder and things like that as well too. So it's going to be a really fun discussion on Sunday. Uh, Chris Roberts, uh, Chris Robertson from um, uh, Blackstone Cherry is coming up the following week on Helix Hour. That's going to be a lot of fun, and of course we'll have some exclusive presets uh, like we always have for our Helix fans. Uh, Courtney Cox coming up on the show on EVH and Gear TV. Uh, another shred diva for sure. Um, kind of an old affiliate and friend of uh, Anita Strauss's. So she'll be on the show. And then a really big one that's been a, a, been a bit in the works. And it was kind of a funny way it happened. But we got a, a, a kind of a triple play one Friday on September 28th. We've got Ian Thornley back in, in the house on the program. And it's always a huge, crazy turnout when Ian is here. He's bringing along... Uh, Sean Tubbs and Chelsea Constable. So we've got, uh, you know, a, a powerhouse of guitar. It's just going to be amazing. If we happen to go a little longer than 90 minutes on that one, I think we can excuse it. I think it'll be fun. It's going to be hard to get three killer guitar players um, and, and cap that to 90 minutes. So all kinds of cool stuff. Lots of things coming as well, too. Um, and a, a fourth show is starting. Uh, and yeah, Tone Moore has got that as well, too. Uh, Tool, you're correct. Um, fourth show is starting. And uh, many of you that watch the show on a regular basis, and for those of you that are new here as well too, you might not know this, but I'm a huge Walking Dead fan. The whole Walking Dead universe read the comics. I'm probably about 20 episodes behind in the comics, um, but I, I'm a religious comic reader of The Walking Dead. I love The, the Walking Dead, um, the pilot series that they were doing before The Walking Dead, you know, the cold storage and all that kind of stuff. And of course, Fear the Walking Dead, uh, major, major fans. And years ago, back in around 2003 or no, maybe a little bit, yeah, somewhere around there. 
I don't know, I, no, actually, maybe it was a little bit later than that. I forget when it was. But before the uh, Walker Stalkers, you probably heard about them, the Walker Stalker Con, Walker Stalker Convention. They just went astronomically huge. They're one of the world's, the world's largest uh, zombie horror con now. And um, I used to write for them. I wrote a column called Rocking Dead. And we focused on the score and artists that were in the soundtracks. You know, everything from you know, simple compositions to, you know, famous artists and things like that. And um, once they they took off huge, I just kind of went my way. They went their way. We're still friends. But, you know, there was, they didn't need me anymore, of course, and nor did my column do anything for them. They were all now huge. So I um, resurrected the name, and, and a couple of years back, uh, Nocturnal Butterfly suggested to me, you should, you should do a Walking Dead show, because I would be talking about Walking Dead sometimes. I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And recently I said, I got this great idea for another fourth show. I want to do a Walking Dead show. And she looked at me at 6 o'clock in the morning when I told her this, and she just laughed at me. She goes, um, does this sound familiar? I'm like, what? It's a great idea. It's my idea. She goes, I told you that a couple of years ago. I'm like, you're right. It's your idea. <laughs> it was her idea. So we're having Rocking Dead, my very first guest coming up towards uh, the beginning of October, which would be the, right around the premiere of The Walking Dead. I think it premieres on the 7th. I'm going to have uh, Lou Temple, who's a phenomenal actor. You've seen him in a million things from, you know, all the Rob Zombie movies and just about any movie that um, he, uh, there's a death. Rob, uh, sorry, uh, Lou Temple is in that he played Axel on The Walking Dead in season three at the prison and was, uh, you know, shot by the governor. Uh, so he's going to be my very first guest. And then we're going to be looking at booking some other uh, really, really cool uh, Walking Dead universe guests. So that's coming up very, very soon. So four shows and you'll be seeing um, some merch in the Broad Stash Boutique for Rocking Dead as well, too. Let me see here. Am I missing anything else? Jason Wade says, wow, what a stream tonight. Thank you. This is really awesome. I'm glad that it's it's still entertaining to you when I don't have a guest on. You know, I didn't have a guest book for tonight. That's the hardest thing, booking a, a guest steadily for one show. Now I'm booking for three, poss- and I'm not possibly, but now three and four shows. But trust me, I'm working hard every week on this. It is pretty much a full-time gig for one person just booking guests because you got to stay on with these publicists and agents and managers and secretaries and then repeat all day long. You know, if you don't keep on them, they will forget about you. And uh, it's it's a long process, but I do it because I want to bring good good entertainment your way. And I'm hoping now with these four different little platforms, EVH and Gary TV, which is kind of the, the encompassing network, Helix uh, Hour and Kramer Corner and then Rocking Dead. It's a little bit for the family. So we've got a little bit of a mix. I hope uh, I hope everybody uh, likes that. Um, and uh, Rick Hefner is here, says, uh, hey, guys, just got home. Uh, drag, I missed so much. You did miss a fair amount, on for about 50 minutes, 55 minutes of it, whatever, uh, Rick. But you can always go back when you get a chance and um, and play it back. It's, it's one of the nice things about replay. So I'm going to end this, song, uh, this broadcast with a song called uh, In the Sun. And here again, too, it is just... Um, it's nothing fancy on guitar. It's one of the first songs off the record, the first record, but I'm going to switch back to the other guitar, which is in standard tuning. And Coffee Drinker, Ryan says, looking forward to The Rocking Dead. I heard Walking Dead was enterta- entering its final stages of TV production. TV production say say it isn't. So that's hard to say. I think without giving any spoilers away, um, I think after the season, depending how fans react, what's going to happen in the first five episodes, because what's going to, what's going to be, and this is no spoilers. I'm not going to give any spoilers, but the first five episodes will probably determine where people are going to go with their loyalty to the show. The sixth episode will really tell. Um, and uh, so we'll see from there. But if we're diehard fans, we'll give it a fair, fair shake, right? And we'll see what we can do. It's a great show. And, uh, you know, uh, Lyle Ketchum says, uh, not kidding about hearing you telling stories from the road. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do that for sure. It'll be a lot of fun. And uh, Jason Witt says, we can work around. I live in the USA if you want one. All right, let's 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 mute this guitar for a second. Oops, I was going to mute my microphone. We just want to mute um, Helix. Okay, one sec. This guitar feels so good in the hands for sure. So um, let's try this one. And there's some really cool, th- really cool things um, in this song. Let's turn Helix back on. So believe it or not, this goes way back to 2005 when we recorded this, and I actually used a Line 6 Variax. And I had to, had to remember this. This was the very first Line 6 Variax guitar that was back then, and it didn't even have the pickups in them. They're all, the, you know, computer simulated, which they still have the computer models inside now, but it was no pickup whatsoever. And there's a thing inside here, which I won't be able to duplicate today. This was my preset that I have, but I needed... Um, myself and the producer were looking for a uh, we're going for a sitar we actually did use a sitar and we used a 12 string Rickenbacker to simulate this one part in the song where it goes something like really really simple little uh, ar- arpeggiated thing but um, the uh, the main riff is just like 
Okay, so instead of me playing it all and describing it to you, I'm going to play this to you, and I'm going to say goodnight to you all, and we'll look forward to seeing you uh, on Friday night. I'll, I'll update everybody on the Facebook group, uh, Facebook page, if I have Thomas on Friday. If not, we'll still try to work out something for Friday as well, too. Don't like to leave dead air in, on a Friday night. Okay, so this song here is called In the Sun. And you know what? Maybe we can try to say this, too. Let's wish for some sunshine. I know we have a horrific uh, storm hurricane, all of the above, coming to our um, our eastern uh coast and i want to wish everyone um the very best be safe out there please uh, and don't um ignore any warnings i mean i'd be the type of person that uh it's okay we're going to be good we had a tornado warning here which is a, a very very severe one and uh and i almost ignored it and nocturnal butterflies packing everything you know uh, the only thing i don't think we had packed was a van halen fair warning cd which we, we you, everyone needs in their survival kit get your water and get your your granola and all that kind of stuff change of underwear and a van halen fair warning cd and that so that we're going to start building our kit but not to make any light of that it's just a joke um but somewhat but uh, we wish everybody on uh, that's going to be facing that uh, the horrendous storm our best. Uh, be safe. Try to stay with family if you can get away from that. And uh, you know, if you're if you're regulars here on the show and you happen to be in that area, please communicate with us through Facebook. It would be nice to hear from you that uh, you are okay because I don't know where exactly everybody lives. But if you're in that path, please keep us updated and, and make us feel very good um, that you're uh, you're safe. That would be, you know we'll sleep a lot better at night too because we're family here. That's first and foremost. We're family. Okay, so we're going to say goodnight here, and I'm going to play In the Sun, okay? Here we go, and uh, I won't even say goodbye. I'm just going to turn it over to the end credits at the end. So thank you, every, everybody in the chat. You are the best. Thank you to my moderators, all of you. You are the best, and uh, we will see you very soon. Here we go, In the Sun. So it's sunshine for everybody, okay? Even if we don't have the sunshine, just keep it in our minds.
Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to check out our full lineup of Kramer Corner merchandise available for purchase right now at broadstash.com. <laughs>